Wait, I know what you're thinking. I don't have any more space for plants at home. Firstly, these are not plants. And secondly, they don't take up much room. Hi, my name is L. Come for the puns, stay for everything else. Maybe. Possibly. I guess you can say I'm a pretty fun guy. Today, we will be taking a closer look at one of these, also known as a mushroom grower kit. Perfect for those of you who don't have green fingers, just like me, and want to speed run something that isn't meat. In this video, I'll be going over how to use it, how to harvest the mushrooms, how to reuse it, and my overall experience. Let's get to growing. So the kit comes in a box just like this. It contains the fruiting block as well as a mini spray bottle. Getting started is relatively simple. Open the box, remove the bottle and close it back up. Next, fill the bottle with some water. Now see these perforated lines? All you have to do is to firmly press down on it and it should pop right off. Remove it from the box and you'll be left with a nice cutout exposing the package inside. This fruiting block is basically made up of what mushrooms need to grow. If you're wondering what the white stuff is, that's mushroom mycelium. Next, what you want to do is to grab a knife and cut an X into the block. I find that using a serrated knife does the job pretty well. Next, lift up one of the flaps and using the mini spray bottle, spray it two or three times. Repeat this for the other three flaps. And that's pretty much it. All it needs now is some light and oxygen. Place your block somewhere it can receive light, but away from direct sunlight. It also helps if it's humid and well ventilated. Your kitchen tabletop or laundry area are some potential choices. Oh, and depending on which you're more comfortable with, you can do it standing up or lying down, whichever floats your boat. All that's left is to do absolutely nothing for the next few days. Just come back every once in a while and make sure there's condensation under the flaps just like this. Mushroom spores do enjoy moist environments. If there is, you're good to go. If not, give it a few sprays of water. For the next few days, it will look like nothing's happening. Don't worry, it will be just fine. Mushrooms are growers not showers, and it takes some time for them to get over their performance anxiety. Mine sprouted little buds on day 4. Hey there little buddy! At this point, things will move fairly quickly over the next few days. The mushrooms will roughly double in size every 24 hours, and you want to harvest them when it's just right. When your mushrooms look bright and vibrant with their caps spread out, it's time to harvest. This is from the second bloom, which I will explain why in a minute. To harvest them, all you have to do is to reach as close to the substrate as possible with your hands and just pluck it off. It's as easy as that. It's normal if some of the substrate comes attached to the mushrooms. You can just remove it later by cutting it off. For this variety, I chose to remove the larger parts of the stems as they were a bit too fibrous and probably wouldn't be very nice to eat. If you're not eating it right away, then just place them in a paper bag and store them in the fridge. Alternatively, place them in a bowl, cover them with cling wrap, poke a few holes to let them breathe and store it in the fridge as well. As for the first bloom, I was a day late in harvesting them, and as you can see here, they sort of started to discolor and shrivel up. Unlike plants, spraying them with water isn't going to revive them. There is no refractionary period here. This is because, once mushrooms reach maturity, they release their spores and their job is done. If you've reached this stage, just pluck them out and remove any mushrooms that look like they're too far gone. What I did with the rest was to dehydrate them and then freeze them. If you're wondering how to do that, have a video going over what you need to do, so feel free to check it out. Dehydrated mushrooms are great for making stocks, soups, sauces, or anything else that requires a boost of flavor. Going for round two is relatively simple. Just remove any leftover bits of mushrooms still attached to the substrate and give it some time to rest. About a day is good. 
Next, fill the basin with some water. Remove the blooming kit from the box and place it X side down into the water. It should float, but if not, just add more water. Let it soak overnight and you're good to go. The next day. Place it back into the box the next day and let the mushrooms re-sprout over the next few days. It won't bloom as much as your first batch because some of the nutrients have already been used up, but we get what we can. And there you have it, how to use a mushroom grower kit. Overall, I will say that these kits can be a pretty fun mini project that requires no effort at all. However, don't expect an infinite amount of mushrooms. It's relatively straightforward and fuss-free, so you should have no real issues if you decide to try it. While the box does say it's supposed to provide up to 3 months of harvest, from what I experienced, it's probably only enough for about 1 or 2 meals. But don't worry, mushrooms are not endangered in any way, so this shouldn't affect your moral compass. To my knowledge, there are ways you can keep these kits going indefinitely, but this would require specialized tools and specific setups. If you're interested in getting your own, links to the ones that I got will be in the description. Sellers usually have a variety of different mushrooms, so choose whichever you like. As for everyone else who lives in a different country from me, well, Google is your next best friend. Chances are, you may actually have access to more exotic types of mushrooms. But that's all for today, my friends. I'll see you guys and girls next week for a video just like this. In the meantime, if you want to follow me on my socials, links to everything can be found in the description. I post there from time to time, so feel free to follow me there. Also, if you're new to the channel, remember to click that like button if you enjoyed the video and do consider subscribing because why not? And finally, let me know which type of mushroom is the absolute worst in the comments down below and why is it the button mushrooms that come in a tin. But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you beautiful people in the next video. Thank you.